Let's see if we can simplify this expression. So pause the video and, and have a try at it. And then we're going to do it together right now. All right. So when you look at this, it looks like both the numerator and the denominator, they might, you might be able to factor them. And maybe they have some common factors that you can divide the numerator and the denominator by uh, to simplify it. So let's first try to factor the numerator. x to the fourth plus 8x squared plus 7. And at first, it might be a little intimidating because you have an x to the fourth here. It's not a, it's not a quadratic. It's a fourth degree polynomial. But like, any, if you, like a lot of quadratics that we've seen in the past, it does seem to have a pattern. For example, if this said x squared plus, plus 8x plus 7, you'd say, oh, well, this is pretty straightforward to factor. What two numbers add up to 8, and when I take their product, I get 7? Well, there's only two numbers that where you take their product and, and you get positive 7 that are going to be positive, and, 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 and you, they need to be positive if they're going to add up to positive 8, and that's 1 and 7. So this would be x plus 7 times x plus 1. Well, if you just think of, instead of thinking in terms of x and x squared, if you just think in terms of x squared and x to the fourth, it's going to be the exact same thing. So this thing can be written as x squared plus 7 times x squared plus 1. If you want, you could do some type of a substitution saying, uh, saying that a is equal to x squared, in which case, so if you said that a is equal to x squared, then this thing would become a squared plus 8a plus 7. And then you would factor this into a plus 7 and a plus 1. And then you would, you would undo the substitution. And that's x squared plus 7 and x squared plus 1. But hopefully you see what's going on here. This, this is, this is the, the higher order term. And then this is half the degree of that. So it fits this mold. And so you could do a substitution. Or you could just recognize, well, OK, instead of a, I'm dealing, dealing with x squareds, I'm dealing with x to the fourth. All right, so that's the numerator. Now let's think about, let's think about the denominator. So the denominator, both of these terms are divisible by 3x. So let's, let's factor out a 3x. So it's 3x times, 3x times, if you factor out a 3x here, 3 divided by 3 is 1. x to the fifth divided by x is x to the fourth. And then if you, subtr if you factor out a 3x here, you're just going to get 1. And so far, this doesn't seem too helpful. I don't see an x to the fourth minus 1 or a 3x in the numerator. But maybe I can factor this out further, x to the fourth minus 1. And that's because it is a difference of squares. And you might say, wait, wait, I, I'm always used to recognizing a difference of squares as something like a squared minus 1, which you could write as a plus 1 times a minus 1. Well, this would be a squared minus 1 if you say that, if you say that a is equal to x squared, then this would be a squared minus 1. So let's rewrite all of this. So let's rewrite. So this is all going to be equal to same numerator. See, let's do it in green. Same numerator, x squared plus 7. Can't factor that out anymore. Times x squared plus 1. Can't factor that out anymore. All of that over 3x. But this, I can view as a difference of squares. So this is x squared squared, and this is obviously 1 squared. So this is going to be x squared plus 1 times x squared minus times x squared minus 1. Now, clearly I have an x squared in the numerator, x squared minus 1 in the numerator, x squared, sorry, x squared plus 1 in the numerator, x squared plus 1 in the denominator. And so I could cancel them out, and I'm going to be left with in the numerator x squared plus 7 over 3x times x squared minus 1. Now, this looks pretty simple. And we want to be a little careful, because whenever we do this canceling out, we, don't want, to make we want to make sure that we restrict the, the, the x's for which the expression is defined if we want them to be algebraically equivalent. So this one, would this be, this would obviously be undefined if so x cannot be equal to 0, x cannot be equal to plus or minus 1, po positive or negative 1 would make this expression right over here equal 0. So it cannot be equal to 0. x cannot be equal to, I'll write plus or minus 1. That would make this part 0. But this right over here, this one, uh, unless we're assuming we're dealing only with real numbers, uh, this one can't ever equal 0 if you're dealing with real numbers. Because x squared is always going to be non-negative, and you're adding it to a positive value. And so this part 
this this factor would have never made the entire thing undefined. So we can actually just factor it out or cancel it out without worrying much about it. And so this is actually algebraically equivalent to what we had originally. Now we could write these constraints on it if we want. If someone were to ask me, uh, you know, for what x is, is this expression not defined? Well, it's clear it's not defined for x. That would make the denominator equal zero, dividing by zero, not defined. Or if x is plus or minus one, it would make the denominator equal zero. But that is that comes straight out of this expression. So this expression and our original expression are algebraically equivalent. Now, if you wanted to, you could expand the bottom out a little bit. You could multiply it out if you like. That's equivalent to so x squared plus seven over three x times x squared is three x to the third minus three x. So these are all these are all equivalent expressions, and and we are done.